If you're thinking about picking up the MPC Live 2 and want to know if it's right for you, in this video I'm going to be sharing my honest experience after using it for two years and hopefully this can guide you in the right direction. But just remember what works for me might not work for you. And also it just really comes down to whatever workflow you prefer and the type of beats you want to create. To give you some context, I started off using a DAW, mainly FL Studio, and I still use FL to this day, man. FL gang forever, bro. So it's not like I traded in my FL for the MPC. It really just serves as both two different instruments in my eyes. And then I got into machine after watching Sarah Too Ill and Danny Asadi who inspired me to learn finger drumming. And dude, finger drumming is a whole new way of making beats because of the grooves you come up with. And I just wanted to get back to playing my music live again instead of just clicking in notes because what happened time to time when I used FL Studio, I would just come across the same patterns because I'm thinking about it instead of just feeling it. So from there, I continued my finger drumming journey and that's how I came across people like Jay Black and A-Rad Music and other dope MPC users. And their performances made me want to see what the MPC is all about. And considering its huge influence on hip hop, I just wanted to be a part of that too. So it was really that simple. Now, one of the first things that stood out to me were definitely the pads man it just felt more professional i think it's because it's thicker you know i had an mk3 and the pads is a lot thinner but i would say the pads being thin is good for speed but it also had that plastic feel so it would make a loud noise and i didn't notice this until i started using my mpc after a while and then when i went to practice on my mk3 i'm like dude it's making mad noise like <laughs> anyways so overall the quality built of the pads are good but coming to the actual build of the MPC, yeah, you know, I have a bit of mixed feelings on it. And here we go. Because the thing is, is quite bulky, you know, and with my MK3, not trying to compare the two, but I'm just trying to give you guys some kind of sense. When With my MK3, it's a bit slimmer, so I could just throw that in the bag. I can still put this in the bag, but it's definitely a lot heavier. So if you're not hitting the gym, yeah, this is definitely going to weigh on you, bro. But you can always get a backpack that can compensate for the weight. I think that's the best way to go about it because I have a backpack just like that. And I could throw that into my bag and it doesn't really feel like I'm carrying it compared to if I had it in another bag, like transport, you know? <laughs> but there are perks to it weighing this much because now it's more sturdier, you know? Even if I had it on the edge, I could still play around and not feel like it's about to just tip over, but I'm not gonna ever play on the edge like that. <laughs> and another thing that makes up for that is, is battery powered. So I don't have to plug it up to my computer or plug it into the wall. I could just really be anywhere outside or on the couch just cooking up, man. And that goes into the other main reason why I wanted the MPC Live 2 specifically, because I know a lot of people going for the MPC One and the MPC One Plus, cause it's also standalone but the built-in speakers is just super convenient. Now, I'm not thinking about, oh, could I mix on this? It doesn't sound like the Adam Studio monitors. Like a lot of people just be delusional sometimes of what they're asking for. But trust me, this is definitely good enough, man. It's loud enough for you to hear it in front of you and the people around you. Now, as far as the design, I definitely like the look of the MPC Live 2 versus the other MPCs like the MPC X and the SE and all that because they just got a lot more buttons and it got a lot more knobs. And for me, less is more, man, because you have like these secondary options at the bottom in the white lettering that you could just either double tap or you hold down shift to get to it. And as for the aesthetic, I'm not a fan of the black one. I feel like it gets dirty very fast and you could definitely see that versus on the retro. It gets dirty too, but it's like, you're not gonna see it as fast as this one. And also the wear and tear also shows a bit more as you guys probably seen in my videos. Now, that doesn't mean like the quality is bad. I think for me, I just kind of threw it in my bag carelessly. I don't have a case. I just bring it around with me. But at the same time, you know, I'm not just having my MPC for looks. I'm trying to cook up, you feel me? <laughs> Facts. Now having a good built and design is all good, but does it work properly? Does it function in a way where I could have an efficient workflow? And I would say it does, like especially when it comes to sampling. Like I do like to sample a bit more in FL because the algorithm is a lot better in my opinion, but I would say that on MPC, I could get a lot more creative, especially with the pads. I can like chop it up into 16 bits and just mess around and you know, just have fun with it. I think finger drumming for me plays a big part in why I like chopping samples on here because Remember, it's back to the groove. It's not just clicking in um, notes. So I can use different kind of timing. I don't always have to use one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I can switch it up, use dotted note rhythms like one, a two, a three, a four. 
and do stuff like that. And another thing I like about chopping samples on the MPC is that I can use my phone. So I actually have a cord, hold on. And this is a Y cable, Y cable. So it's like two mono signals going out to a stereo output, going out to this dongle that I have for my iPhone. And I could just simply plug all this up and then start sampling from my phone. And that is very convenient because, you know, we don't want to always have to use our SD card, go onto the computer, put it onto the SD card and put it back. I mean, that is a process. Or you could also hook it up via USB and just kind of download it in. But like I said, I don't really use controller mode that much. Now, as far as the touchscreen, I don't necessarily have a problem with it because I feel like it's just like any other touchscreen, just like on my phone, like it's, it operates well. It's not like, oh, it has a delay and all that. But I really use the touchscreen in the sense of moving around notes. Like I'm finger drumming most of the time. So that's probably why I'm not getting the same issues as other people. And also the way I use the touchscreen as well. I don't move around notes with my finger. If I'm going to move around a note, I would just highlight it and then move it with the um, data wheel. And I definitely like the screen size for the older NPCs. I don't think I could have been on that because the screens were so small and it's like, mm, not really my kind of thing, bro. So the screen is really good. I still keep my protector on and this is not really a screen protector, but Look, I'm not taking this off no time. And if you took yours off, man, you kind of messed up. But one thing I would say that I don't like about the LCD screen is that it's not bright enough or it doesn't have like a reflector. I don't know what they will call it, but if I'm going out into the sun, you could start to see that you're not going to really be able to see your screen. And that kind of beats the purpose of cooking up outside or stuff like that. But either way, I'm in Thailand. There's no cooking up outside because this shit would get mad overheated. It's hot, yo, it's hot. But you still can see it if you're under shade. But I remember when I was cooking up on the island, I couldn't see anything. And I know people in the comments thought, oh, the MPC wasn't on. The MPC was actually on. It's just that that's how dark it looks. Now, as the overall function of making beats on it, it's quite simple, man. Like I said, if you already came from a DAW, you understand how to make music. You just need to know the functions and what it can do. And for the most part, it can do pretty much what other DAWs can do. The only limitations I would say on MPC Live 2 is just the VST plugins. Now you can hook it up to the software or hook it up to another DAW and use plugins that way there's gonna be a little workaround that you gotta to do to do that. But like I said, if I'm gonna hook this up to the computer, I'm just gonna use FL Studio. But for me, that's not a deal breaker because like I said, I really brought this machine to sample. And if I really needed any kind of plugins, I could just go to Splice. And the fact that they have an integration with Splice, yeah, it's done for. I don't really need anything else because I could get my one shots from there. I could also put in my own sounds like from drum kits. You could also sample from VSTs. Now I would say if you pick up the MPC yourself, you're not gonna really get a lot of sounds in the beginning. You're probably only gonna get like three plugins. And if you like making things from scratch, those plugins ain't really that good. I'm just gonna be straight up, yo. <laughs> the only free plugins I would recommend, I actually have a video on this. As far as sounds go, I would say Hype is probably the best free plugin that comes with it or you either gotta download it. But I would say if you have a bit more money, invest into Akai plugins like the Fabric XL or Jura, if you like that, AD sound. It just depends on the sounds that you want. The reason why I said to pick up the Akai plugins instead of doing all the workarounds just to get VST samples in here, because sometimes you just want something that's easily accessible. I don't want to have to always like try to sample in sounds that would just take too much. And honestly, I would just get tired of doing that. So the best thing to do in this instance is just wait till it goes on sale. So when it does go on sale, it's actually a good sell. Now here's the thing. Yeah, these plugins might be expensive, but it doesn't mean, oh, it's a scam or they're a rip off. Like you got to stop thinking in this way. And I'm not saying this because of a car. I'm, this is how I think for any kind of brand. Like, dude, you got to understand business is always going to be business and it's going to always be their business. It's not your business. So you have two options. If you can afford it, then just buy it, bro. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. You getting mad is not going to change their pricing. They already have a market of people that's going to really buy it for that price already. So now it's just really up to you. Have that accountability and that discernment to know, okay, should I get this plugin or should I not? Don't just be like, oh, it costs so much. I don't want it because suppose it has all the sounds that you want it. You know, 
you got to think more clear. Don't just turn off because of your emotions and don't just buy because of your emotions. Like make conscious decisions on when you do things, bro. So throughout the video, I really kind of gave you guys my mindset on how I look at certain things. But I just want to dive a bit deeper into the mindset and the learning curve. I remember going into Qatar Center and just want to mess around with it. And I didn't understand the menu screen. I actually bought the MPC like three times, bro. Like I brought it and returned it, brought it and returned it. Because, you know, that transition from a DAW to the MPC and the workflow, I was like, nah, I really felt like I was moving backwards. When it comes to learning anything, bro, what I like to say to myself is that it's just new. Because I know when anything was new and I did it for quite a period of time, it became easier. So when I told myself that, you know, my mind was like, oh, it's just new, then we can learn it versus, oh, it's hard. And then your brain is going to be like, I don't want to do anything that's hard. That's how most people's brains operate. It's designed to keep you comfortable. This is why so many people complain about the shift from um, MPC 2.0 to 3.0. And then they make excuses to be like, it's because they took out this or this and that. And I'm like, bro. If you really look at the MPC 3.0, it's quite the same thing. And yeah, they did take out a bit of certain things, but that's for you to adapt. And you should always want to be adapting and upgrading. You shouldn't want to just stay comfortable for 10 years just working with that same workflow. How can you get more creative if you've been in that workflow for 10 years, bro? Like you gotta switch it up. That's my honest experience, bro. So hopefully this video gave you guys some kind of insight. Remember, this is just my experience. And if you can relate to it, then you know you can. And if you're new, starting out, and you still don't know where to go, keep watching more videos, keep watching more reviews. But at the end of the day, you're just gonna have to make a decision at one point and just kind of stick with it over time and then you will see. Yes, life is about investing in yourself. Sometimes you're gonna lose money, but sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're gonna actually buy something that's well worth it. And you're not gonna know that just by being afraid of um, spending your money, bro. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Like and share with your other producer friend that's thinking about getting the MPC and they're not sure which one. I like the MPC Live too over all of them and it is what it is. Peace.